and good evening. Welcome to another episode of Student Life. The 17th of November represents the Students International Day. To talk about her experience today with us is Mariona Borrell, the IFEMIS Air European Regional Director from AX Catalonia. Good evening, Mariona. Thank you for accepting our invitation. Good evening. Thank you for having me. It's my pleasure. Uh, first of all, let's start the discussion by explaining to us what is IFMSA and what is its mission. Okay, so the IFMSA uh, stands for the International Federation of Medical Students Associations, and we actually have uh, 145 national member organizations in over 130 countries all around the world. So you can actually uh, <laughs> imagine the amount of people that is part of this federation. Um, and um, when it comes to the mission, we aim to empower medical students um, when, when user, in using their knowledge and capacities to benefit society and also to provide a forum for, for students throughout the world to discuss topics related to individual and community health, education, science, and to formulate policies from such discussions. And of course, as well, we promote and, and facilitate professional and scientific exchanges, um, as well as other projects. And we wish to be a link between members and medical students associations and other international organizations um, that encourage the cooperation between uh, each other for the ultimate benefit of uh, society's health. Thank you. Um, as I was saying, the 17th of November is the Students' International Day. What does it mean for you to be a medical student above all? For me, if you asked me uh, a few years ago, I would have told you that the clinical part is uh, the most important part or what got me into study medicine. But uh, right now, I would say that being a medical student is way more than just uh, studying uh, microbiology, anatomy, um, oncology, and any other subject that we have, but it's also taking into account the rest of the world and the, the human as a whole when it comes to their um, psychological side and their uh, social side and all the other factors that actually uh, impact uh, health that are not only clinical and can not only be evaluated by um, um, by x-rays or other tests, but also um, can be prevented and can be worked on um, in any other aspect in life, in uh, politics, in economy, in basically education as well. Uh, so basically, um, yes, I'm a medical student, but uh, I realized that health is everywhere. Yes, I agree. I agree with your definition, let's say. We have come to know that one of the FMSA's mottos is think globally, act locally. What does it mean for you as a regional director? So um, as regional director, I'm um, I'm managing a team, an international team, the European regional team, um, that is basically giving the national member organizations uh, the tools and uh, the, the capacities and anything that they need in order to really have an impact on a national and a local level. So I basically think of myself as a link to bring everything uh, every opportunity that we get from the outside of IFMSA into um, the Federation uh, and help helping and hoping that it reaches our members and as well um, trying to collect and report everything that we are doing uh, on a local and national level um, and exporting it outside and uh, actually advocating uh, on an international level for things that are happening on a local level. Several weeks ago, you attended the World, Summit, World Health Summit, being part of the FMSA delegation. How would you describe the experience from the perspective of a medical student and also from the perspective of FMSA delegate? 
Uh, yes, so it was a really, really interesting conference with uh, very high level speakers, I have to say. And uh, as a medical student, I believe that it was an incredible opportunity for all of us to attend a conference like this from our homes um, and get to uh, experience uh, what a conference of this of this level is like and uh, getting to also um, know and maybe uh, ask questions to people that we would normal, normally not usually meet. Um, and also as an IFMSA delegate, we were able to uh, have a side event in this, in this uh, conference um, related to youth and COVID and gender as well. Um, and for us, it meant a lot because we were able to showcase uh, the work that IFMSA is doing in those areas. And as well, we were uh, very thankful that we got to invite uh, some very, very um, amazing panelists that um, provided a very interesting discussion for all the people that attended our side event. Well, we have learned how far you come in this organization which is incredible. How was this journey for you? And what was your main motivation when joining, uh, giving part of your time to the benefit of others? Well, I actually joined my national or and local organization uh, a few years ago after going on an exchange, an IFMSA exchange. And uh, the experience uh, had such an impact on me that when I came back home, I was very determined that I wanted to be part of this organization. I, I wanted to um, basically know all the structure and how we make firstly exchanges happen, but then I discovered all this world of uh, public health and human rights and sexual and reproductive health and rights that was completely unknown to me. So um, basically, through discovering new passions of mine, I, I started working in different projects and having different uh, positions, meeting new people and learning all during all my, all my journey in the IFMSA. Um, and I wouldn't have imagined that um, I would have come to have a position like this a few years ago, but I do really, really enjoy um, not only the work that I do, but seeing that what we do uh, means something and really has an impact. Um, so that's really what, what drives me and what motivates me. Talking about the journey, uh, how do you think the current pandemic affected the learning process of our generation of medical students? Well, I think that the student community was actually one of the um, ones that were most impacted by the pandemic. Um, maybe not in terms of physical health, but um, it affected a lot our mental health uh, when it came to uh, being uh, closed up in our homes, not being able to continue learning. Um, and not only that, but between the teachers and the students, we had to come up with basically the next steps in our education. We all had to discover how to how to go go on and continue continue teaching, continue learning. And um, I believe that we, of course, are still not at the same level uh, that we were before the pandemic with. Uh, without online classes. Um, I do believe that um, since the new um, school year started, we've had time to learn, uh, time to actually prepare more for what's coming. Uh, we've, we've gotten to know how the situation is uh, for some months right now, but, um, but we, our education, even if right now, we can see some consequences um, of having online education and not being able to practice hands-on. Um, I think that we will see some uh, more severe consequences of it in maybe one, two or three years time when um, 
when we get to compare the experiences uh, between the people that um, were able to finish it, their degrees regularly and the ones that didn't, not only in terms of learning, but also uh, the state of mind that we are learning in right now. Um, uh, when talking from a medical student's perspective and talking to other medical students, uh, right now I we are seeing that it's way, way, way more difficult for us as students to actually cope with uh, the stress of having exams because we're not, uh, we're still barely able to go outside and um, we're still trying to find out um, what our rhythms are. We cannot uh, endure as many hours uh, as we could before. Uh, we are finding out that online classes are way more tiring uh, than than regular classes and that our attention span when it comes to online events is way shorter. So um, we are still figuring it out, but I, I do think that we were uh, one of the groups that was most uh, negatively impacted by, by this pandemic. I can totally agree with everything you said. Since all of the events of FMSAI are now online, how do you see the positive and negative aspect of this uh, change? And how should we keep our members engaged during this time? Um, so when it comes to the IFMSA, we're, we're very used to actually working online because we're from every part of the world, basically. So we only get to work physically twice a year when we have our general assemblies. So in that sense, IFMSA did not change that much but when it comes to um as i was saying the general assemblies um we've had to adapt a lot and 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 change many things but some of the positive things that i actually noticed in our august uh, general assembly were that we had more delegates than ever especially from regions that are usually very very underrepresented like africa and the americas so that is something that is actually positive for the ifmsa we we are we had more representation from all the regions uh, than ever um, and being a multicultural organization uh, itself that is uh, extremely positive also, of course, we find some negative aspects because the, the capacity building part and the educational part is, uh, is a bit more difficult and uh, you don't have as many resources as you would have when you are in a physical setting. But uh, I do believe that there are many tools online and many programs, many websites, applications and other resources that we can uh, investigate and uh, invest in. and. Uh, that they will of course not offer you the the experience of a physical event but we can try our best and and still compensate for that and and try to think of the representation of the event itself and and hope that maybe we can actually get to to meet all those delegates uh from all over the world in our next uh, general assembly whenever it is one of the regional priorities for this term is health workforce. In your perspective, how can we as students take action in this matter? Yes, that is a very, very pressing issue right now in, in Europe uh, as a whole. Um, I do think that the best thing that we can do is, of course, unite forces when it comes to uh, the regional level and in the international level. But we all have different governments with different laws, different health systems and education systems. So um, we can uh, build our capacities to, together and educate ourselves together, but we need to advocate in our country on a national level. We need to advocate for better working conditions, um, a better education when it comes to um, including every uh, every aspect that influences health in the medical curricula we need to include public health we need we need to include uh, climate change uh, and many other aspects that we are still lacking in our curricula and we also need to to advocate 
uh, for the working conditions. And we, I believe that we can also um, contact other stakeholders on a national level like medical uh, or doctors associations, residents or interns associations, if you have any in your country and unite our forces and show that we really, we all want to work in our countries uh, and stay in our countries. No one wants to be forced to uh, look for a job in, in another country or no one wants to be forced to protest for better working conditions. So if, um, if we try to educate ourselves and then uh, advocate on a national level to the governments, to the faculties, to the administration in the hospitals, I think that's how we will get uh, the biggest impact. We know that if MSA represents a multicultural environment, how, how is the experience of working in a different multicultural setting and how can it shape a better physician? And why would it be important for our colleagues to have this experience? Yeah, so I never knew how much uh, a multicultural environment uh, could be uh, positive for uh, your education um, as a whole, but also as well uh, for a medical student. But um, it is so enriching to listen to other people's day-to-day -day, uh, life stories, how uh, what traditions they have, how they behave in their homes, in their hospitals. Not only that, but experiencing the cultural shock, for example, when you when you go on exchange. Um, I believe that uh, all of this, plus many other situations that you encounter when you are in a multicultural environment, uh, really, really increase your ability to empathize with your future patients, your future colleagues. And that is something that as physicians, we really, we really need to work on um, to actually be, um, be able to take care of our, our future patients. Um, and that's why it would be important. And that is also why um, we really advocate for, um, for the inclusion of uh, intercultural learning uh, in the in, in the medical curriculum. Well, it was awesome to listen to your ideas and your experience about everything awesome that you are doing. Uh, do you have a message to tell the students that are uh, looking to you right now? <laughs> um, well, my message would be to don't lose the student spirit that I like to call it, which is uh, don't lose um, your your will and your energy to actually change the things that you don't like. Don't, don't start settling um, for things and accepting things that should really be unacceptable or thinking that because something is really established or has always been done this way or because someone says it's like that, it should really stay that way. Um, there's always people that will think like you. And uh, if you just look around, you will always find someone to, to, to join forces and to fight uh, for change. So don't lose that and join any, any organization that is, is fighting for what you believe in. Well, thank you very much. That is a great message and I really love it. And I think that uh, it is very true, everything that you said. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you very much once again for having this interview with us and we wish you very good luck for your journey. Thank you so much for having me. It's my pleasure and uh, I hope that you have a wonderful Students' Day. For uh, the ones that are watching us right now, we thank you for your patience and for your attention and we will like to welcome you very much in the next episode of Student Life.